Hi there, my name is Robert Bruce Starr. Welcome to another Star Talk. You're going to be in for a great, great show today. Uh, it's a very different kind of show, but it's one that I think that you'll remember for a long, long time to come. This weekend, I was at a seminar that uh, my friend Lavender invited uh, Lauren and I to. And we ended up meeting some very incredible people. Uh, so incredible that I changed my schedule around. And for people that have been traveling around over 36 countries in the last 25 years, they happened to be here one more day so that we could do a show together. So uh, my guests are the co-founders of the nonprofit uh, Linwall Foundation. And so my special guests are Dr. Issa Linwall and Yolanda. Thank you so much for coming. Thank it's you for inviting us, Bruce. It was a, a, a very enlightening, a very uh, educational. Uh, what I learned from you helped me right away. But rather than me try to explain what I learned, why don't you tell me a little bit about the work that you do, and then I want to find out about how you met. The work that we do. Yes. It actually started a long time ago. I was a, a chiropractor 34 years. And uh, during this period of time, I began to open up as a clairvoyant. And uh, in order to, at first I was not trusting this because I thought there are many entities out there that could come through and disturb my energy field or some way fool me. So I, I had taken some work from Dr. George Goodhart, which is called kinesiology. And kinesiology is a system that can be trusted very well to check out what is true and what is not true. And the human body is capable of working this to the very core of our soul and to the power that created us. So I trusted that. I had already tested it and tested it. I knew. It could, be it could be utilized in a trustworthy way. So I utilized that process in working with people. As I got these messages that came through my head, I began to check them out with kinesiology and, and we're check the patient out because every person has a, a muscle group for every organ of the body that can be tested. And uh, these can be totally dependent upon. It's like... In your home, you have your fuses uh, that uh, can be blown if you put too much power into a circuit. Well, the human body is like that. If we have anger, we can blow circuits in the body. And I find the most vulnerable circuit in the body for anger, the two most vulnerable, would be the lung meridian and the liver meridian. So, and the bladder meridian. So I had researched this considerably and uh, being a scientific individual, I had to prove these things out. And as I began to, uh, to get messages or energies that were like a computer uh, message into my brain, I began to check them out with the kinesiology again and again and again. And then I would check the person involved with the kinesiology to see if that was accurate I checked their bodies, and I found that there was total accuracy every time. And when I began to get energies that I didn't understand, that came in from what was considered to be past lives. I knew they were past lives, but I couldn't trust them because I had programs in me that didn't, did not exist. No such thing as past lives. No such thing as past lives. So I, in my mind said, oh, this can't be. I never learned about past lives. I never heard about that. I, I grew up in, in a very religious family. I never heard anything about that. But they came in persistently and they would become so real to me. I could not deny them. So it really took me a long period of time before I could totally accept this truth. But I've come to totally accept it. I know it exists. There's nobody can talk me out of it anymore. Because I know. When you know that you know that you know, you're, you're not going to be moved from that truth. And it's one thing to have a belief in yourself, but it's another thing to have that incredible talent that you have 
to be able to feel energies and know what's going on in someone's body. We're going to find that out a little later on in the show, exactly how you do that. Yes, I'll be glad to demonstrate that. It'll be my joy to do that, really. Because I love this work. Because I feel like I am an instrument of the great power that created me. And I'm just an instrument, and I know that. And you've been doing this for 25 years and traveled to 36 countries. Tell me a little bit what it's like in each of the different countries and how people are reacting to your work. Wow. <clears throat> in um, so many countries, it's, it's hard to even begin to elucidate a, a, about how varied they are but yet similar. And I'd have to say the bottom line or the common denominator is that we're all spirit. We are all pure essence created in the image and likeness of the great spirit. In the English language, we call that the soul. And it doesn't matter what race, what background, what creed, what religious belief they have or the culture. When we come together one-on-one -on -one and we ask the highest to be present to bring forth the greatest good for all, it happens. And we realize we're family. So all of the other is just window dressing, and it isn't that important. It's an interesting story because I heard it before. Tell me about how you met, and then we can go on to more serious things. Well, I laughingly say that I, I had a bad back. I came to him. He fixed it, so I had to marry him. Ah. <laughs> and with someone with his talent, I, I brag about the fact that I get to sleep with this man. If I wake up with a backache and a pain here, uh, he knows how to help me resolve that, not just by giving a chiropractic adjustment, though he's one of the very best, and we had a wonderful practice uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, and I worked as his chiropractic assistant for many years. So tell me a little bit about, I mean, very, very powerful to be an excellent chiropractor and to have the powers and abilities to be able to sense things. Tell me a little bit. I know you started to tell me, but t how does that work inside? What's going on? Well, as I said, I was getting these, so what appeared to be messages or communications. I, I'd rather call it a communication. It comes into my brain, and I hear it, not with my ears, but with my insides. And I previously had to check this thing out very closely, like I said, before I could trust it. But after I checked it and spent years perhaps even five years, making, doing a lot of research, I finally knew, without a doubt, that everything that came through was accurate and came from the highest source of the, in the universe, the power that created everything. And we did such things as and checking with the uh, client. They would call on the phone, make an appointment to come into the chiropractic clinic. And we would go aside and we'd use the kinesiology method between us as a method of asking the spirit of the highest to give me a weak arm for a yes, a strong arm for no, and examine that patient before we ever met them. We only had a name. We would stand aside and Issa would know the subluxations, the names of these various uh, subluxations, which I have never learned. I still don't have the understanding of what ASA and all of this subluxation means. But I was absolutely amazed that when they would come into the clinic and by examining them with x-rays and the other methods of physical testing, that we were so accurate. And being like the dummy of the, uh, the pair, it was like a double blind. I was, I was blinder than blind in, in being able to influence this answer. And after checking and using this process for, like you said, years, then we began to trust it to guide us in other areas. And I'll have to say this has been the guidance that brought us into 36 countries in the last 24 years. We would never have I think, on our own, chosen to do that. But when the guidance said, you're to do this, you're to go, for example, to Moscow, and we were there one day after the coup ended. Uh, we were to go to Germany. We were there uh, helping with training many young people to do this releasing work, clearing their consciousness, to help bring down the Berlin Wall, to bring down the Iron Curtain. 
And our group of 30 some odd students in 1988 were told, the etheric wall is gone. You've been working to clear this from the consciousness of people who've been holding it there. And the etheric wall is gone. It's only a matter of time before the physical comes down. And so, of course, they were very excited a year later uh, when the wall came down and they were calling us saying it's down, sending us little pieces of the wall. And we think, you know, that's very, very arrogant maybe to think that we had a part in that. But I know that we all, all of the people who had a, a desire to see that separation and division in this state of Germany removed, had a hand in bringing it down. It was so painful to see two people separated like that. Family. Family separated. Who had not and been able to see machine guns sitting up there, killing years. anybody that wants to get across. It was, to us, it was, uh, it had to come down. And one of the ways that you're spreading your work is doing what you did with us this weekend, the releasing work we were actually working with someone who was brand new to this. And so the power of the spoken word. Tell us about the value of the power of the spoken word. Well, it's like this. The soul is really in command. Uh, we are a soul having a human experience in a body. And the, the brain is the computer. The soul is a computer operator. And the body in your life is your printout. So that means we are constantly creating ourselves all the time with our thoughts. Everything we think and say, a whole little mind for 33 and a third seconds, becomes a permanent part of us. So if you want to create a wonderful life, your thoughts must be commensurate with that. If you want to, if you, of course, no one wants to create a negative life, but unfortunately, the ignorance on the planet is so great that the majority is creating the negativity. So our mission on this planet is to bring up enough knowledge, get enough people involved with this process, and, and taking out the old programs that are, are breaking down life, are negative, and put in new programs that are building up life. So enough of us get to this program so that the world can make a shift. And about the spoken word, when we have a person make a release statement it's as if they have chosen so something that they've called up on the screen of the computer, as we do our personal computer. And when it's there, we have this choice to delete it or not to delete it. If we choose to say, I delete it, we push the button. And it doesn't disappear automatically. Usually a dialog box will come up and say, do you really want to let this go, yes or no? Well, we as souls have that option. We are the computer operator, the driver of this car. And anything that comes up in our life, we have an option. Do I choose to embody this concept, this vibration, this energy field? Or do I choose to delete it from my computer? And if we say yes, we send out this vibration and it goes out with force. If we uh, vacillate and say, oh, I don't know, maybe not. I tease people about going on a diet. We say, oh, yes, I need to lose 5, 10, 20 pounds. I'm going to cut out the sugar. But every time someone presents us with a piece of pie or an ice cream, we have that choice again to make. I don't do very well with that choice, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I go for the ice cream or the cake, so. But it's our choice. And if we say, OK, that I choose to delete that choice I made and make another choice. But know that we are building our life and our body by the choices we make every day, every day. So let's teach our viewers right now what they can do for themselves. Because you've been able to help us come up with statements. For instance, before we started the show just a couple of minutes ago, I said I just came off doing a radio show and my throat is sounding a little raspy. What can someone do? Let's Let's give some, uh, some positive things or uh, suggestive things that people can say to themselves to help themselves. Well, in this instance, uh, I suggested, because you said I just did a, an hour-long radio show, and I said, release the belief that I cannot do two shows back-to-back -back 
without straining my voice. So if I say that back out to you, I you, am affirming that. So You are making that choice right now. I release that negative belief that I cannot do this. I release that, that negative belief that I cannot do two shows, two shows back to back. Back to back. Without stressing and straining without my voice. Without stressing or straining my voice. And people could do this for anything. Everything. In other words, if they get a little discipline in their lives about their thoughts and they come up with a negative thought and that negative thought makes them feel pretty awful they can come up with a statement I release that negative thought I have about my mother about my father I there's so many different things that someone can say to loosen up that that hold that they have on that's probably hurting them physically absolutely and then to choose a positive affirmation okay you can also release another thing for your throat uh, just say I, I release my uh, over concern that I might say the wrong thing. I release my over concern that I might say the wrong thing. And I, that's certainly always in the back of my mind. Yeah. And uh, I feel, Bruce, that we made such a beautiful connection. And I feel that you respect the work that we do. And I honor that you want this presentation to be as impeccable as we can make it. So release your fear that it won't be. I release my <laughs> fear that the show won't be a perfect presentation. <laughs> And it will be, and it is. It will be, and it is. Great. Great. So now, we actually have someone with us that we can... Uh, you've never met this person before. I, I don't even know if you even know her name. No, I don't. Okay. I saw her as we came in. Okay. And her name is Robin, and she's kind of uh, been laying here very patiently uh, for the first half of the show, and she's waiting with great anticipation to... Uh, have you do what you do and actually we have an audience here and we're all waiting to see the kind of work that you do as you do it right now live on our show. I'll be very happy to do that and uh, I'll be in the process of using kinesiology to back up what, what is being done to show that the energy has gone through and that the power has come through into that part of the body. And, and, that, uh, and I would like to uh, sometimes and I saw you do this uh, over the weekend sometimes you use your chakras to clear energy. Yeah. So I know that you gave us a little bit of a warning uh, at the seminar, so you might want to do the same thing now. If, if the need is there, I will do that. Okay. And that means that he simply takes misqualified energy through his body and converts it back into natural, pure energy. Beautiful. It takes it from being misqualified. Excellent. And the, it, the kinesiology, maybe a little bit of explanation for your audience. When a, um, an organ, which is connected to a meridian, is out of balance, and this muscle is tested, it will not have its normal strength if it is out of balance. When it returns to its normal strength, after some concept or belief or emotion is released from the computer, he will retest it and it will have its normal strength. Excellent. Thank you. I know during the, uh, the weekend, uh, it was very exciting to be doing the work and have you and Dr. Issa come by and, and work with us. So now the, now the audience is going to get a little bit of a chance. So we're going to check the circuits of your body, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, see what your body is trying to tell you. Because it's a wonderful thing, this body. It's a, like a miracle thing. Mm -hmm. It is a miracle. To see how the body functions and how it was created. The circuitry in the body, now I'm checking. And I find you have a weakness here in this elbow. So hold that strong as you can. Is there nothing there, is there? Mm -hmm. You're putting a lot of pressure on, but you're, mm -hmm. there's nothing there. Right. And the same thing with this one. Hold strong. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So let's see what the body is trying to tell you. Say, I release. I release. We're going round and round. I release going round and round. In the astral plane. In the astral plane. Looking for who I truly am. Looking for who I truly am. And I accept. I accept. I was created. I was created. In the image of God. In the image of God. And I accept that's who I am. I accept that's who I am. Okay, now let's see what goes on here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it's very mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. There's no, no dispute there, is there? No. Okay. 
And I see too you have weak hips. Yes. It's where the joint comes in like this. Mm -hmm. It's a weakness in the way the structures are held together by the ligaments and the muscles in there. Mm -hmm. We test that like this. Bring this leg way out here and hold strong. Are you trying to hold it? I'll try again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you tried as hard as you could, I right? I did, yes. Now this one, out. Same thing there, it's very weak. I put about maybe eight, 10 pounds of pressure on there, that's all. So now let's see what causes that, what your, what your body is trying to tell us. Because it is a blessing that we get these signals in our mm -hmm. bodies so we can know what to do about it. That's the way it's meant to be. It was built that way, created that way. Mm -hmm. It's genetic. Now something that is, that is genetic is nothing but a memory in the body cells. And it can be released just as easily mm -hmm. as any other type of energy. So let's see what this is. Now this is it comes from your mother's side of the family. <laughs> see, I release my inherited tendency. I release my inherited tendency. To have hip joint disease. To have hip joint disease. Uh, from my mother. From my mother. Her father. Her father. His father. His father. His father. His father. And his father. And his father. Five generations. So now let's come out again and check that. Hold strong. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold strong. <laughs> and if we can re realize that these are electrical <laughs> circuits, mm -hmm. and just as we overload a circuit in our meter box in our buildings and that circuit breaker has to be turned back on. Now with acupuncture or an acupressure you can uh, treat that circuit mechanically with your own body to simulate this and that gets the circuit breaker back on. But without going to the cause of why it tripped in the first place it will trip out again. That, and that's why it's so important yeah. That's why it's so important to deal with these memories. Right. So that these uh, conditions can uh, be permanently And you changed. did say, uh, I believe, over the weekend that any illness can be healed. I believe that there's nothing that cannot be healed. That this power that created this body can, can heal this body. And I've seen blind people healed, deaf, epileptics every other kind of condition that you can name. And of course and we know that trauma happens to, to the body. If you're run over by a truck or you're gored by a bull, we need to go back and, and correct that, stitch up the material uh, realm and put it back together so that the healing can take place. We need to provide the right environment so that the healing can really take place. Yes, the environment for the human body is very important and we must take care of following these laws and rules that involve the human body. However, in this case now we have a contracted muscle right here at the, it's a little hard to reach it. Mm. Let's see there's a big knot there, a very tender spot, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now let's check over here and that's nice and loose, huh? Mm -hmm. It's only on the right side. So just say this, say I release. I release. Uh, my resistance. My resistance. To being in the body. To being in the body. At this time of turmoil. At this time of turmoil. On planet Earth. On planet Earth. And fear. And fear. Of life. Of life. From my, myself and my family. From myself and my family. Now, when you release that immediately. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Is that all gone now? It's gone. <laughs> it's instantaneous. Yeah. Energy can be changed in the blink of an eyelash. <laughs> and some people ask, well, now, will it return? Well, it's like if, if you are invited to have sugar again and you, you make another choice, the body will reflect it. Hmm. In other words, it's not too likely you'll do that again because now you're aware of it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you did do the same thing again, it would show up as a tight neck on the right side. Mm -hmm. 
It's a signal to our body that there's something wrong. We, we are resisting something. Mm -hmm. If you resist something, it affects this side. If you fight something, it affects this side. Okay. Mm. We actually have about a minute or so left. We're going to keep going with the healing, and then when it's time for me to say goodbye, I'll do that, but let's keep going with the healing. Okay. Now, she has a lower back problem. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I see it there. Bring your legs up. And hold that strong. And push it against me now. Push it as hard as you can. It's impossible to, to do that, isn't it? It's weak. Mm. And that should be so strong you can throw me. Oh. These are powerful muscles. Okay. Believe me, I've been thrown. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see what it is. I release the fear of, of misusing my power. Ugh, I release the fear of misusing my power. Between bodies. Between bodies. Looking at the past. Looking at the past. And now I think I make a... And now I make a... You no, know, I, I release my decision not to bring that power into my body. I release the decision not to bring that power into my body. In this life. In this life. Because of my fear of misusing it. Because of my fear of misusing Lisa, it. Lisa, give me one second. We, we're going to say goodbye. We're going to continue with the healing. My name is Robert Brustara. You've been watching Star Talk. Thank you for joining us. We'll continue. Bye-bye now. <laughs> okay.